Welcome back. After a completely uneventful day yesterday, we pick up on the second day of Colorado's elk archery season. A little bit of a late start today. We're heading over to make a call where we had some bugles last year and in the vicinity where that bull was last night. <laughs> No luck there, we moved in deeper, made some coffee, had some snacks. After a while, this little fox popped out. He's on the prowl looking for stuff along the creek down there. So then we decided we got to go up the mountain in a spot we've not gone before. We need to filter and top off our water. There's a bunch of trout right there in that little hole, and Brian dropped the camera in to try to get some footage of them. moose paddle might have made Brian's trip, but now he's got to carry it up the mountain. Once we got up there, it kind of started to rain, so we just hunkered down for a little bit. We got a little squirrel buddy up on this branch, and he's kind of checking us out, giving us the business. I'm under a poncho back there, and that is a keeper. I'm definitely going to continue to bring a poncho with me, because I got it over my pack and over my legs. I do want to find a poncho that's a little bit bigger, though. Once the rain stopped, we moved on and we found this new to us kind of wallow area, but it's clear it wasn't hit and it was hit by maybe moose and or cattle. That was one frustrated elk hunter right there. Uh, those are teeth marks. <laughs> those are. Yeah. Looks like some cat was playing with it. I was using it as a weapon against the cat. <laughs> Within just a few steps of leaving that spot with the broken and, and eaten up bugle tube, we smelled some decaying flesh of some sort. So we looked around and we just couldn't find anything there. We were hoping we were not going to find some hunter. That one might be the one that cleans our clock this afternoon. Early afternoon. We are in the second most lightning strike state in the country. Why well, you gotta remind me? We're a long way from camp. We got what's going to be a nasty storm coming down on us. So we ended up in a spot where we kind of wanted to be in the evening, but we had several hours to kill. So we really were just sitting there and just waiting out the storms. One would pass, We'd dry off in the sun a little bit, another would pass, dry off in the sun, another would pass. That happened maybe a three or four times. And then there was the longest roll of thunder, which made Brian kind of nervous.
While drying out between one of the rain clouds, we got visited by what I believe to be a marten. Welcome back to Eating Snacks Outdoors. I'm Chris, and this is your co-host, Brian. Love some snacks. We're gonna do some home-style chicken and rice. We got coffee ready to go. We're just gonna have a little something after that rainstorm. Wasn't bad. Wasn't bad. That thing's loud. So we waited that evening, called, listened, nothing. So we had a pretty good hike back to camp that night, and in the morning we figured we are just going to leave. We don't have sign on the ground. We don't have bugles going off. We heard possibly one bugle, and we saw the one bull in our area. The ones we saw the previous day way across, that those don't count. They were two and a half, three miles away on the opposite side of the entire valley. So and it was only about five of them so who knows if we could have ever found them again anyway so we're just going to get a good night's sleep and head out in the morning round one our time is up we have a nasty hike out of here we got to somehow manage to get through a bunch of this junk it's soaking wet we'll be soaking wet feet are already soaking wet because the boots are soaked could be worse could be actively raining on us while we're packing up. It was supposed to be raining this morning. So in this case, I'm glad the forecast is completely wrong. Packing up in the rain would, would suck. And if it's going to be wrong, I'd like it to be really wrong and let us get all the way back to the truck before it does that. So. It also said it was supposed to be dry all night and it rained half yeah. the night. It's supposed to uh, be dry all night and start raining at 7 this morning. Well, it's 7 now, but it rained most of the night. So maybe that was the rain that was supposed to be this morning. All right, Brian. Good conditioning we had. Excellent full dress rehearsal. We never come back <laughs> to this place again. Pound it. Ugh. Good dress rehearsal. Next week, we're serious. <laughs> We're gonna find some milk. This stuff is wet. There's going to be no walking on this deadfall. Yeah. Now what we found out after the fact was that this spot was part of the extreme winter kill this year in Colorado. There was a nasty amount of winter weather that killed off lots of big game animals. Probably a lot of small game animals too. But excessive snowpack, way above average. I think anywhere from like 150% to 200% of their normal snowfall. Colder than normal temperatures for longer duration with heavy winds. Uh, killed a lot of big game animals up in this area. I did not know and we did not know that this area was part of that zone because in my mind I keep thinking this area is more in the central part of Colorado but it's really more on the western side at least the western third so it's actually in that zone of the extreme winter kill. Hopefully Brian and I stick to our guns and we don't go back to that place again. We kept going back there over these past few years because we've had elk encounters there. But every year it seems the deadfall gets worse and worse and worse and it gets harder to move around back there. And I can't imagine having to hike some of that stuff that we hike through 
with 80, 90 pounds on your back if you've got an elk hindquarter in your pack. Now we haven't had a whole lot of success hunting with bows for elk, but one day it could happen and we're way back there through all the deadfall and we get one down and we got to get that joker out of there. So hopefully we don't go back and now there's really no reason to go back. It's going to be at least three to five years, probably closer to five years before there's a, a decent number of elk back into that area, assuming normal reproduction uh, occurs between the remaining bulls and cows. We decided we're going to go to a completely different unit, one we've never been to before, and it's one we picked while we were here listening to a whole lot of nothing going on. So next video, completely new spot to us. Hope you liked this one. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down there, and as always, thanks for watching.